Hi everyone, this is Becky with Labrat Academy and I've been mandated to shelter in place, most likely like you have too, so I wanted to hang out with you this morning a little bit and teach you something really cool. I have this amazing stargazer lily right here and it has some really amazing features on it that I wanted to share with you. So this is a plant, it is a living organism that needs to be able to reproduce to be able to continue to have its species on this planet, which is why they have these flowers. These flowers are for reproduction, which means they have girl and boy parts just like us humans have. Well, not exactly the same. So I wanted to talk to you about how this actually works. So first of all, the flower has to be able to um, share its genetic information with another plant because it cannot travel to be able to do that because it's pretty much rooted in place. It has to have something called a pollinator to be able to take this genetic information from this flower to another plant. So to be able to do that, it has to have something that's going to attract pollinators, maybe like a bee or a um, hummingbird or a moth. So some things from this flower that it is going to use to attract pollinators would be um, color. You can see the petals on this have color. Also, it has nectar. Nectar is very sweet. It would attract maybe a, a butterfly. It has the pollen, which has protein and nutrients inside of, inside of it that some uh, pollinators would want to eat. It also has an amazing aroma, a smell, like these stargazer lilies have an amazing smell, which is why I like them so much. So let's take a look at these petals. These petals have two different kinds of petals. The ones on the outside that are kind of thin, they have a little bit of green on the tips here. That is because they are not true petals. They are actually called tepals because those tepals, when they are still in the baby flower to form, they actually protect the growing parts inside here. And they form like a little capsule to keep it protected while those reproductive organs are maturing. So when those actually fold out, you'll notice that these are the same color. And so they are called tepals and the ones on the inside are called petals. If you rearrange those words a little bit, you'll see they're very similar. But um, if they were completely green, like on some roses, they have uh, the pod, the rosebud inside of green, that would be called a sepal. So those sepals would open up and they kind of hang out the outside and they're not the same color as the petals. So they're called sepals instead of tepals. So let's take a look at these right here. Do you notice that these petals actually have little patterns on them? Also the tepals do. But these patterns are called nectar guides because they kind of guide these flying pollinators into the middle of here because that's where the, the nectar is inside here. So these are nectar guides that lead and guide them in there. And so let's take a look at the inside now while we try to get this done as fast as possible. So these are the reproductive organs. They have, like I said, girl and boy parts. And the boy parts are on the outside. And the way that I remember what those are called is because they're called stamen. So I say, stay man. Stay man, like you man, stay right there. So these are the stamen and they have two major parts. There's the filament that just really shoots really high because they want this pollen packet to be as high as possible. The pollen packet is called a anther, an anther. If you look really close, you'll notice, oops, you'll notice those pollen packets are full of bright orangey brown pollen, which is ready to have any kind of pollen pollinator bump up against it and have that pollen like stick to them so they can go to another flower and share that genetic information with that other plant. So that would be the stamen part. And then the female part is the inside. That is the pistol. She's quick as a pistol. That's how I remember how the girl part is called. The pistol has quite a few parts to it. It has a stigma on the top and the stigma is sticky because when the pollinator comes in with a pollen from the other plant, it will actually bump up against that sticky stigma, grab a hold of that pollen. Hopefully some of that pollen is from a flower of the same species. It'll send that genetic information from that pollen down this style. The long stick is called the style because she's got a style. And that's very helpful to remember. That genetic information down that pollen tube in the style will go down into the bottom down here. And down here, this flower has something amazing called an ovary. Just like me, I have an ovary that has eggs in it. This 
flower has an ovary with eggs inside of it and an egg has half of the genetic information to be able to make a baby seed. So half of the information comes from the pollen, half of the information comes from the egg, which they call ovules in a plant. And when you have a half and a half, you make a whole seed. So that will turn into the seeds inside here and then the, the seed will create a, a like a fruit because the fruit is um, surrounding the seed and then that seed will go on to make another baby plant. So this is called a simple flower because you can actually see the stamen and the pistils really easily. We can talk more about a different kind of plant called a compound flower later. So I hope you enjoyed our lesson today. That was really fun to talk with you guys and I hope all is well. Stay safe and I'll talk to you next time. Bye guys.